some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Hey everyone, welcome back to Board Games Unlocked, and we are doing a discussion for Sleeping Gods Distant Skies. Uh, this is a preliminary discussion if you're new to the channel or watching this video. Uh, we clearly have not beaten Sleeping Gods, but we always do kind of a discussion in between a campaign to kind of give our overall thoughts and then do a final discussion when the campaign is either over or we decide to quit. Um, hey, let's quit. And yeah, I'm kind of over it. Uh, <laughs> is that all it is? Just that's... walking around on a map, <laughs> exploring stuff, and reading cards. And that's it. Yeah, just be reductive about the game. <laughs> all you're doing is like just kind of moving on a map. That's really it. Yeah. Um, These online multiplayer games, they're all the same. <laughs> they're just, you get in, you fight stuff. You pick up stuff, <laughs> you complete a quest, and then you probably do a different quest. Yeah, that's that's it. That's over it. and over and over. Yeah, uh, so Sleeping Gods is the sequel, standalone sequel to the original Sleeping Gods, which was Ryan Lockett's magnum opus. Uh, in my opinion, his best game. I absolutely love Sleeping Gods for the past, since it came out, which was... 28 years ago. Mm -hmm. 28 whole years. What's magnum opus? Like it's the best. very best it's opus, best. the very yeah. best. So 2021. So since that came out, it has been my number one game, uh, and I was ecstatic to find that he made a sequel. But unfortunately, that can lead to disappointment. It can, and did it? Not at all. Nope. <laughs> at least not for me. I mean, Cat's posture says something different. <laughs> You're like a kid. I have to be doing something. <laughs> sorry. It's the ADHD. Luckily, you are doing something. Sorry. Are we I, done? I, oh, that was so fucking cool. I hit the table and it spun. Woo! Are we done? And that's the discussion. <laughs> anyway. So, uh, we'll be able to do comparisons to the original Super Gods. I actually have the old achievement list. Uh, just that's kind of like what we would mainly focus on and um, Yeah, what do you guys think of Sleeping Gods Distant Skies? Really liking it so far. Enjoying it. Yep. Yeah, yep, I'm, yep, I'm yep, surprised yep. the the changes they've introduced um, uh, For the most part I'm gonna say are making it better. I would agree. Yeah um, we can Get into more specifics of it. Yeah, so what's really cool is the, the they did make changes so it's not literally Sleeping Gods just on a different map right. with different stories. They did make some, I would say, quality of life changes. Yeah. Uh, they seem to kind of do a little bit more focusing on characters, so you don't have eight... It was eight characters? Yep. You don't have eight characters they're trying to manage. You just have four plus Claire, so five total. Um, there's no ability cards that are hyper-specific to characters, which... I kind of liked. I liked having those, yeah. like, oh, this is who this character, what this character can do. Yeah. But I'm gonna bring that up again in combat. Okay. Uh, so in this, it's way more free flowing. It's just a deck of ability cards, so you can build your characters how you want instead of being like, well, we have whatever Rodrigo, who's our fighter. Hopefully, they can fight. Where it's like, oh, well, anyone can fight, but they do kind of have skills that are a little bit more specific. Um, but man, yeah, I'm just so glad that he didn't pull back on the exploration. Mm. Like, yeah. still, it's like, I mean, we've played, like, six hours probably of just this game, and we've been to two pages. Mm -hmm. Like, we've flipped the thing twice. Yeah. And every single time, it's like, we've been to... And I we've mean, only explored probably half of each of those pages. Right. And what we have explored has been, like, all very... Like interesting, it hasn't been like oh well, okay like yeah I guess it, we went there yeah and the in the times it was like that it was like oh we need a torch well technically you don't need one we can suffer a bunch of damage but you know what let's try and find a torch yeah um which some people again might not like because it can feel aimless yeah uh which is like well where do where do we go. Like, how do I get a torch? Well, it's not linear, it's open world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and yeah. Which is good. And I said that, yeah, about the first one was this is very much true sandbox. Mm -hmm. Like, plop, you get start here, there. go. Yep. 
Go like, find stuff. You yeah. want to you want to fly to the northern sea? Sure. Yeah. Go do that. <laughs> uh, and explore stuff. The one thing I have no idea though, and it might be in the rule book, is how the this game actually ends. Right. Uh, what triggers the ending? I mean? Yeah. What triggers the actual end game? Because in the original, it was going through that event deck three times. Well, I thought it was the campfire. Uh. Yeah. That is. Does that say go to go to this paragraph mm -hmm. or something? No. Nope. Okay, so that just ends the campaign. I have no idea. It just says standard campaign is how many camps we have, and mm -hmm. then we have five. I mean, I don't know, five restored totems. Maybe that's how it is. Oh wait, hold on. When you mark this camp. Uh, oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, so we, there's a star above a campaign. When you mark this camp after camping, if keyword glutton turned to 106. So we do actually have the keyword glutton. So we would... I I feel it's still centered around the event deck. Yes. It's not like those three different decks. It's one big event deck, mm -hmm. and there's quests that get put in there. So I feel like that's still our kind of our timer, because those seem to be about the gods, which are very intrigued about the overall story. Um, yeah, I want to know what's going on. Just kind of like, oh, all the gods are weakened now, or we lo the totems lost their power because the gods awakened. It's just like, ooh, man, what happened? What happened here? And yeah. it ties to the first one a little bit. Yeah. yeah, I always like that where it's like time has passed. Mm -hmm. and it's like it's not going like because you think that when a god awakens, it's just like they're all powerful and they're at yeah. their peak performance, but they're just like fuck. <laughs> right. Yeah, we're we're actually really <laughs> weak. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, because also, in the original, there were 13 endings. Mm -hmm. um, Good thing they turned that down, so we don't have to play it as much. That's true. <laughs> uh, 13 yes. was a bit much. And in this one, there are six. But, there's a lot more discovery in this one than the original. So the original had a bunch of totems, like, and that was mainly it, like, uh, yeah, a bunch of totems, a bunch of achievements you can get, and then unlocked cards, and then 13 endings. This one has totems, the six endings, bosses, treasure maps, passengers, and unlocked cards. So there's a lot more to actually explore than just, trying to get just finding goal. totems. Because yeah. I know your endings were kind of based off totems yeah. in the original. So, I mean, we'll talk about that a lot more whenever the game actually ends. Uh... But honestly, yeah, if you didn't like Sleeping Gods, you're not going to like this. Um, for many of the same reasons. For, yeah, for pretty much the exact same reasons. It has the same feel. Yes. It's just been tweaked. Yeah. For the better. So, yeah, I, I very much agree. So, let's talk about the differences. Uh, we talked about the characters a little bit more. Um, I'm, inter I'm actually interested that they, they use different characters, and I wonder if... Well, I guess those other characters escaped, yeah. so they're just back living their lives. Yeah, they wouldn't... Well, I wonder if some of them stayed. I feel like some of them did stay. Maybe. Depends on the ending. Yeah. Maybe we'll find some. I wonder, because you know how some video games have multiple endings, but there's a true ending? Yeah. I wonder if there's, like, a true ending to the original, and we can come across maybe some of those other characters. That'd be kind of cool. Be like, oh, hey, it's the priest guy. I don't remember his name. Yeah. <laughs> Marco. I think it was Marco. It was Marco. Um, or it could just be a refresh, new cast. Yeah. Um, because. And what's even better about this is there's audio narration now. Right. Oh my god! Like, it's such it's such a godsend. Um, I can't do campaigns if I don't have audio narration anymore. Like. Well, you don't have to do voices. That's no, it's not even doing voices. I like I don't do voices. Like whenever I did Aeon's End Legacy, I didn't do voices and just talking. I'm talking throughout the entire game and I'm reading and it's like it's not fun for you guys if I'm reading paragraphs of shit. It's just like Sometimes everyone. It's fun for us. <laughs> if it's really bad and maybe I throw in some left field stuff that's like is that actually in there? Yeah. It's like, no. It's, but yeah. It sucked as what? <laughs> exactly. I so. I don't think they wrote that. But I mean the voice acting. The background ambiance that's not overbearing to the uh, actual dialogue. Um, yeah, the web app for this is pretty seamless. That is like the only time I ever go into the book is kind of like, well, am I, I mean, let's make sure this is the right one. Yeah, before we start listening to it. Right. <laughs> uh, but yeah, and I know now the original Sleeping Gods has audio narration. It just didn't back whenever we were playing it. Um. All right, so let's talk about 
some major differences. Brett, what are your favorite differences? Hmm, favorite differences. Um, I will say that the fiddliness and the um, lack one more resource to track and to figure out how to share the command tokens from the original. Yeah. Mm. That got to be kind of a drag. <laughs> yeah. Like, well, I'd like to, but there's no way I can do that too because <clears throat> I'm all out of command. Right. Instead, that was replaced or with stamina. Got, or one, one player has seven. Yeah. And we yeah. each have two because... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it kind of felt like the active player got to do a lot more, and everyone else was like, uh, well, I might help. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, oh, wait, nope, we got to spend them all on this tableau of item cards. That is all gone. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah, and for the better, honestly. Yeah, basically, it was just one resource now. Mm hmm. Yeah, they really streamlined the. Because the table presence of the first one was like... Well, yeah, I guess these are resources, but... Well, they, yeah, but it's like two piles. It's common and uh, quest yeah. resources. I was thinking about stamina as the single... Yes. Turn, turn, turn to turn resource. Mm -hmm. That's spent for most things. And it's consistent. It's everyone has three. Mm -hmm. So, and it's like, okay, yeah, I can use my abilities. I have that. Uh, and my ability cards cost those. And it's not like, well, yeah, I have seven command. Can't really use it all, but I can't trade it to anyone. Yeah. So I guess we'll just try and use it on some of these items. And then somebody else can refresh them. Yeah. And you had you had to go to specific locations. There's no Unless ship. Unless they were damaged. <laughs> right, yeah. There's no ship damage or anything like that. There's still plane damage, but it's literally a health bar. Yeah. And that's it. Um... Cat, are you enjoying the uh, the 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 command token changes? Yeah, like a lot more. Yeah, because like if there's one thing I like to do in a game, it's not mess around with stupid shit. Uh, yeah, no, it's it's easy to obviously use because it's just your three little tokens, your coins. Mm -hmm. um, it's easier to keep track of. Yeah. It's easy. easy to get back to. Easy to get back, easy to keep track of. You don't have to stress out about it. Like you said, like the um, almost like unfairness of it's like, okay, well, I know I have like six more than you. Mm -hmm. I can't give you any. Yeah. Like it, it does, it definitely feels more streamlined in the way that it's like, okay, yes, we all can be helpful. Right. Um, yeah, you can just tell that he really either listened to people or put more like thought into it on how to improve it. But like either way, it is a improvement. Yeah. Really good improvement. Yeah, because it felt like with a certain number of player counts, the event deck always hit on the same beat, so it was kind of like one person was always just getting more than everyone else in the original, and now it's there's just none of that. Mm -hmm. None of that at all. And the uh, item cards are still here. Mm -hmm. um, just done again in a much more free-flowing way where it's everyone at the begin at the camp refreshes adventure cards which it's like you just spend them you just now have them so it's like oh i have a recipe yeah, yeah i'll cook some meat so we'll spend the meat and everyone and we can heal three or i have this golden milk and then we just those just go in a one discard pile thing yep and to get those now to get those back you have to camp and camping is limited so i hope that there's going to be another way to Go through that deck. That's yeah. Yeah, I'm wondering <laughs> if maybe there's... I think there's probably going to be, like, villages and stuff that's, like, free camp locations. Yeah. Like, hey, here's an inn you can stay at. Ref like, refresh for free. Because mm -hmm. um, there's no money. In the original, you had money mm -hmm. to actually manage also. That some places were like, hey, you can just outright buy a totem for 15 gold. And it's like, oh my god, how do we get 15 gold? I remember that was what we tried to do in the first one. And I think we got it. Yeah. But it was like, that was our, our goal. And I, I mean, I'm not saying this game takes away anything from the first one. The first one is still a 10 out of 10 yeah. for me. I actually think the command tokens work in that one for what it is. Yeah. But it's just better here. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, I agree. I think the adventure cards, just having it as a deck of free items that whatever you just happen to have, 
And I think the reason why they did that instead of being like, oh, you know, like, here's your item that you have to have, it provokes everyone being able to at least participate. I think that's why they don't let you just have them out in the open. Yeah. It does. It prevents one person from being like, oh, okay, you have five command tokens, you know, so do use this item and use this item. It's like, well, this is in my hand. I know what I can do. And now I can be like, oh, hey, yeah, I want to spend this to get rid of your venom. It allows people to uh, engage, participate without one person being like, I see you have the fishing pole, so let's go here. Um, which again could just be a player problem. And if you want to keep them face up, then keep them face up. I um, like to keep them face up because I will forget. <laughs> yeah, and that's just kind of how it works. Uh, but some people want to not be told really, what to do. Really strange. Uh, and yeah, I think it's great. Okay. Um, so let's go into combat, mm -hmm. which again, what he did, which is fantastic, is again, he kept, he just kept what, what worked in the original, which was pretty much everything, mm -hmm. and just tweaked it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, this isn't a direct sequel to just be like, hey, it's the same game. So combat is still the grid-based combat. Well, I'm not going to look through these because I don't know what we're going to fight. <laughs> but it's still that puzzle-esque combat with a twist. Brett, you want to talk about the twist? I don't know. What twist are you talking about? Combat deck. Oh, the combat deck. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because you said you had, you had some <laughs> comment to make about the characters and combat. Well, yeah. That, that, and that's something that, I mean, it's going to be interesting to see how it works out long term, but r right off the bat, that kind of rubs me the wrong way. Oh, really? The idea that... Um, the weapon draws are random mm. yes. and randomly mm -hmm. distributed, um, as opposed to I know what I can do going into combat. I know I'm outfitted with these. It's true. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's true because I think the some of the character upgrades were like specific weapons, mm -hmm. um, and they do have some car some cards in here that are specific, like the baseball bat. Yeah. But it's like, hey, you do two damage plus a die roll. But you get plus one damage if you're Jesse. Yeah, yeah, and it's yeah. like, well, I'm not Jesse. Yeah. yeah. And I can't play this on Jesse because it's in my hand. I can only play it on the characters that I'm controlling. Mm -hmm. Yes. I I think it is kind of interesting with this combat deck that it also, not only do you have the randomness of the cards coming your way, a lot of the cards also use a die. Mm -hmm. which, which I will, I feel like we have so much more ways to like help with that though true like this uh, like maybe we've just gotten really lucky in finding those items but i feel like if we were trying to redraw or something like it was very hard in the original sleeping gods it was yeah it was because it was again command token related that you can only it's like well that card to that our one card that costs us to redraw costs two command tokens that's all i have so boom mm -hmm. We get one redraw. Yeah. And, and here, it's a bad redraw, and you're like, okay. Yeah, it's like, well, that was a waste, and I don't have any command tokens, so I can't use those on my abilities. Yeah. Um, yeah, here it feels like, oh, yeah, look, uh, a reroll. Spend the stamina, the reroll. Oh, look, a redraw. Mm -hmm. Oh, I have adventure cards. Redraw. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you don't have to discard them. Yeah, so that's the good thing. Yeah. Um, and I actually don't think the die is that bad. Like, there's only one bad result. Mm -hmm. Which is a yeah. negative one. Yeah. And then it's a zero, which is like, well, I know what the damage was going to be anyway. And then it only goes up from there. Yeah. And even negative one isn't terrible. No. It's yeah. Just like an there's, interesting risk to there's no miss. Yeah. Which is, yeah, that could have just, that would have tanked combat for me immediately if mm -hmm. it was like, oh, there's a chance you could miss. It's like, there's no accuracy in this. Because remember in the original, you had to draw fate to see if you even hit. Yeah. yeah. They completely nixed that. So it's like all attacks hit. Yeah. Nothing's ranged. Nothing is ranged. So you have to keep track of whether or not I can use this weapon. Yeah, yeah, so again, he took combat and made it still that good, puzzly nature because everything is a little bit more deterministic in here. Mm -hmm. You could see how much damage they're going to do. You know they're going to counterattack, so you have to be like, how can I mitigate that damage? Yeah. Okay, here's the combat cards everyone happened to get. Who's going first? How much health does everyone have? Yeah. And in or our, who can get rid of all the extra damage they're going to do. Yeah. <laughs> And sometimes, like, in the original combat was like, well, we want to kill these things as fast as possible because they're, at the end, they're all going to go. Yeah. And this, it's like, well, you still want to kill them, but you know even if you kill them, they're going to get one final attack. So it's like, well, 
How about we play that defensive card instead and get the synergy? I feel like you're wanting to go after the not heart as much in this combat. Um, okay. Because it's like like the first combat we had. I mean, the, against the bears, mm -hmm. uh, it was like like we from seeing those, it's like, oh well, we lost. That's mm -hmm. just too much damage they're gonna do with the power. But then Cap was like, I have to go. I have to go potty. So and then uh, and then she just Peter pants right there. Mm -hmm. uh, so we had to take Which a break. Was an interesting strategy. <laughs> but that's what you do in bears, I think. When they attack. Right, exactly. So we had to take a break, and then we had to clean it up, and then you fall... pissed to assert dominance. I don't know if you <laughs> yeah. knew that, but oh, that's it. Yes. Yeah. So what happened was in the break, it was like Brett and I actually like strategized mm -hmm. and was like which to be fair that was our first fight so that right. was the best time to start strategizing right <laughs> that's I, true. I just i knew you guys needed the time to think um but yeah because you're able to look at the combat cards and look at what the the animals are going to do and it's like okay well how about we just actually remove all their power and remove their ability to gain more power Mm -hmm. so that now we know exactly what damage they're going to do. So now we can start weakening them and play more defensive cards yeah. to whittle them down. I mean, we still got hurt. Combat's not like a walk in the park. No, it, it feels more punishing to me. You think? The two fights, well, the, the two fi fights that we've actually decided the outcome of, mm -hmm. um, I mean, we just keep getting knocked down to almost nothing. But that was how the first one was, too. Yeah, true. That first one was kind of yeah, like I guess that. I guess we only got walked through the first half of it. Uh, yeah. We decided. Oh, no, I meant the, in, in the original Sleeping Gods. Oh. In the original Sleeping Gods, every combat still felt like we were losing a bunch of health. Hmm. But uh, I'm trying to remember. I think original characters didn't have as much health either. I don't remember anyone having like 13 or 12 health. No, no. Seven was the most. Most had six or five. Yeah. Because almost every fight in the original, someone was going down. That is true. That is true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're probably right. <clears throat> now, it was kind of easier to get them back into commission. Here you have the whole time-based aspect. Yeah. Uh, but I think with, at least in this, the second fight that we went with like the, the mammoths, we were all at half health. It's true. Um, so, and even then, yeah, we're all, but none of us went down that time. Mm -hmm. Guarantee we were, if everyone's at half health in the first one, yeah, you're dropping three party members. Yeah. Because, <laughs> yeah, like, it might be easy to, you know, get them back up, like you said, back into commission, but it's just like, yeah, but I don't want to do that every single time. <laughs> I know. So, like, I will, I will take more health. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because at the same time, it's like, well, we have to wait to the ship action to go to the med bay to kind of heal someone and mm -hmm. use our precious command tokens to use our items, which also still require resources to heal a little bit. Yeah. And here it's like, oh, well, let's just spend the card. Or we yeah. have whatever. Make some soup. Make some soup and camp. Yeah. And everyone gets to heal too, get their stamina back. Uh Yeah, it's good that that's limited because that's really powerful. Exactly. And I like that. I like that element of, okay, when do we camp? Yeah. <laughs> because we've already used two in about five to six hours of gameplay. Mm -hmm. We're about to use another one. Probably. Um, so, uh, like, okay. And, I mean, l resources are still limited. We don't have any meat to make any soup. Although, whenever we camp, we can spend one of Claire's to get a meat. Now, yeah. Um... Yeah, so it feels like there's just kind of more ways of an answer instead of being like so command token focused. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I I really enjoy the combat, but I do agree, kind of like, yeah, why are there specific combat cards? Uh, if you just hope, but maybe that could be a little bit of an element of surprise to be like, okay, cat, here's your two cards, and she, f oh hey, I got the bat. Yeah. And it's obviously but not a tremendous bonus to it's be the right person. one damage. Yeah. Um, on top of, like, uh, in the bat specific, it's two damage on a die roll. So, at best, if you're Jesse, it's six damage. Yeah. Um, I also like the fact that, well, because the synergy is a little bit different. The synergies are spent on cards. Do you? Would you guys rather have a synergy-specific ability, like, 
in the original, it was kind of like the character had an ability that they passed to someone. It's like, hey, now you can do a diagonal That's attack. That's Would true. you rather have that, where the character is more like, here's my personalized synergy ability, or would you rather have cards with the synergy on them? Interesting question. Let me get back to you on that. <laughs> uh, it, it depends, but probably having them on the cards. Yeah. I kind of think so, too. I prefer it that way. It just seems less messy. It seems to have been beneficial so far. Yeah. yeah. Um, I would say that there's no downside to having it on the cards. No, I mean, and actually, again, it's, it's a little bit more free. You have yeah. your hand of combat cards, and it's like, okay, hey, I got a synergy. Who gets it? Well, there's one downside. Go for it. It's because, like... The third or fourth person in that round, mm -hmm. they may not have, nobody may have synergy uses mm. yeah. with the cards left. So you just hand it to somebody and hope that they draw something useful. That is true. Um, yeah, because you don't know what they're going to get in the next round. Yeah. Um, or somebody else got one. I think that kind of yeah. comes into like the sort of combat deck construction element, because mm -hmm. you have to have at least 14 cards. We've added a few more to this, so maybe you just start removing the ones that don't have synergy. Yeah. So you start, you know... Hey, most of the cards, like we have 15 cards in the deck, 13 of them have synergy on it. Mm -hmm. Someone's going to have it. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, and I did feel like, like, don't get me wrong, I also like the other option in Sleeping, Original Sleeping Gods, where every character had a specific synergy, but I will say you will very much use some of them more than others. Oh, yeah. Like, some of them were just way better than another person's. I don't even, I don't think Marco ever did shit <laughs> in any of the combat. He, he no. couldn't do damage. He couldn't, he had no range. Yeah. I think he could block. That was like his best thing. He had, he had defense. Yeah. And I was like, well, okay. But then that was mitigated by arming him with weaponry. Yes. Oh, and yeah. that's right. something we can't really do with this. No, not, not really. Um, this seems to be more focused on specializing the characters. Yeah. And that one was more about, let's make everybody useful in all kinds of ways because mm -hmm. we never know who's going to be needed. This one, it's like, well, we pretty much want to focus, you know, two or three characteristics there, one or two here, mm -hmm. and anything we get into, they've got a much better shot at doing it all by themselves. That's true. And at the same time, oh, whenever we do a challenge, it's like, okay, who's participating? Well, we can have everyone participate because we have stamina. Mm -hmm. Except Azarius, he's out of stamina, so he's tired, mm -hmm. so he can't. That sucks. Uh, but I still have adventure cards that I can play. Uh, yeah, I think... With Distant Skies, one of the biggest... Whenever they were looking at changes, it feels like freedom. Let's just kind of give players the agency to play the game instead of being like, well, this character has to be played this specific way. Right. Which, again, not taking anything away from the original. There's two different ways to do kind of open world, and I think both work completely. Yeah. I am enjoying this. The, I'm enjoying the changes. I will say, none of the changes they made, I'm like... Oh, that sucks! They got rid of that! Uh, it's like, yeah. fantastic, this works. Yep. <clears throat> um, do you guys have any negatives? Not so far. Yeah. Yeah, it was funny because we had the exact same situation that we did in the first one, which is why this is my favorite game, was... I was like, oh shit, I gotta end the episode, because an hour just flies by. Yeah. Like, this game is one of those that's like, if you're not actually timing it like I'm trying to do for videos, mm -hmm. you're like, that was six hours gone. Uh -huh. Like, you're just going through the game. Yeah. yeah. And the best thing about this is you know it's going to end. This is not one of those, man, when are we done with this campaign? Or, oh my god, we have 80, like, uh, 80 scenarios to do. It's like most likely when the event deck ends, that's the end of the game. The interesting um, to see. And I think they, because it's like, oh man, they only have six endings whenever the original had 13. Yeah. I have a theory on that. <laughs> mm -hmm. So CD Projekt Red had The Witcher 3 that had like 150 hours or something of main story. Okay. Whenever they made Cyberpunk 2077, they didn't finish it, so that game sucked ass. But... When they were making the main story, they said they shortened the main campaign because n most players never beat The Witcher Three because it was too long. Right, babies. And my right because they're yeah they're undedicated losers. I finished that game multiple times. I wonder if, and this I could be making this up. I don't even know if Ryan Lockett has even heard of video games. 
I bet he hasn't. He probably doesn't even have the time. Yeah. Making his own world. Yeah, drawing cats that look like dogs. Yeah, drawing weird animals in his cat. His art sucks. He's probably just like. <laughs> it's a great cat. Don't get me wrong. It's something. It's a great. It's it has a human face. It's um, not. Uh, it's an ancient. So place. I'm wondering if they had 13 endings, and they were like, maybe because again I haven't gotten all 13 endings. Maybe it was like here's 13 okay endings. There's a lot of them, mm -hmm. and in this one they're like, well, let's do quality over quantity. Could be. So the the six endings could be really good, and it's like, well, no one played this enough to get all 13. So now let's do the sequel where it's like your six is a lot more manageable to get endings, but they're also going to be worth worth it a lot more. Yeah. Could be. No idea. That is pure speculation, but that would be my <coughs> my guess. And let's also add a bunch of extra stuff. Right. But it's like, hey, as terms of endings, six it, is easier. And it already feels like that, that he's really pushing out quality right now. Like, mm -hmm. so six, because that, that's the thing is like, when does it become gratuitous? Right. Because, like, because that's another thing with The Witcher where, it, like, yeah, it did have multiple endings, but it also had, like, those little micro endings. Yeah. That it's like, oh, did you kill Junior or not kill Junior? And it's like, well, that has no, like, bearing on, like, <laughs> yeah. really, truly the world. Like, Baldur's there's Gate three endings. main endings. Yeah, it's like, like hey, here's, here's ten main endings in Baldur's Gate, but actually yeah. there's 612. Yeah, and one of them is these... because you dyed a Serion's hair. <laughs> right. Like, something like that. Yeah, it's like, that's not an ending. Yeah. Like, I'm talking about cinematic endings. It's yeah. like, there's six. So it definitely feels like we're going to get quality. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I would, and, I would. I mean, here's the thing. I mean, I have Sleeping Gods as my favorite. I have not done a second campaign. <clears throat> so people could be like, oh, it's be your number one. And it's just like, because it's still fucking fantastic. Because it's pristine um, in my mind. Because uh, I love everything about it. And more also than... because it's just not that serious. Right. Yeah, because it's a fucking number. It doesn't actually matter. <laughs> um, so even then, even at my number one game... It's still a campaign game. I have other campaigns going on. Yeah. I have not gotten a second one in my 13 ending game. They keep making campaign games. They do, and I keep buying them. They're my favorite games to play. You keep harassing your friends. Yeah. Do you want to do this? Why don't you want to hang out? No, I have definitely s slowed. You're I'm like, like. Devin wakes up tied to a chair. Like, you turn on a light bulb that's just bare in a room, and you're just like. I'm naked for some reason. I'd like to play a game. <laughs> Play a, game. a campaign, a campaign game. game. No, I've now. I've I've. <laughs> yeah, at the top of the stairs. Holding, holding another uh, like Medara. <laughs> no, I have definitely slowed on like I don't have the same people in multiple campaigns anymore, um, because Kinfire ended up being poopy. I was like, hey, now we can do another campaign with us three. Yeah, and this shit's good. Yeah, and whenever you mention Sleeping Gods, I'm like, you know, we could do another uh, campaign for a channel. And you're like, oh, the sequel's coming out, right? I'm like, it is. <laughs> so we could do that. And here we are. Uh, so another change they made uh, is the plane. Yeah. What do you guys think of the traversal? Because in the original, it was a boat, and you just, whenever you traveled, you drew a destiny. It's like, oh, now you can move six spaces. Mm -hmm. And it was a lot of, it was all land, or uh, mm -hmm. uh, sea locked. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you just went to like different ports and stuff. Yeah. No, um, oh, that was another way you healed was port actions. They're yep. not that doesn't exist anymore. That's true. Um, so, what do you think about like the like how you can like basically fast travel, um, but then you spend time, which is another element. What do you guys What do you guys think of that? I think it's gonna work. At yeah. first, I was a little skeptical. Same. But um, because <clears throat> with a boat, you could travel. A lot further throughout the maps mm -hmm. in one turn if you wanted to, but this one you just almost teleport. Yeah, you have to move <clears throat> to the right spot, but then you can teleport to a whole other map. Yeah, it, it doesn't seem unforgiving as far as like fuel consumption goes because it is great. That there's people who are just like, no, we do have fuel. Yeah, all the events aren't like horrible. I mean, some of them are just like, oh hey, you have hallucinations, get yeah. madness and take damage. Yeah. Okay, it's okay, but the, all do. the rest are like. Hey, this remains in play at any time. Get gain three fuel. It's like okay, yeah, cool. Yeah, I'm pretty neutral as far as travel goes. Um, it's all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So they, um, uh, I mean, yeah, I completely agree. But the original skepticism I had um, was more not really on the plane itself, but kind of with the 
uh, travel and walking, like the time mechanic was, there are going to be potential turns because you only have five time to, some of it could just be like, well, shit, there's no locations around us. My entire active player turn is moving, is yep. walking. Yep. And then, boom, here you go. Else. Here's two ability cards. Here's an event. Now you get here's to something. explore. But that went away immediately when one of the ability cards gave free movement. Like, I was like, oh, okay, now never mind. Now there's action efficiency. Mm -hmm. yeah. you, only you can do it um, whenever it's your turn. However, it's still there. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Instead of, and, and it already came in handy when we were like, "Oh man, we're all out of torches." You're like, "I have an ability that gives us a torch. Great." Like, you're then not we, gonna believe. This. I know. Then we got, then we got more torches, and then it's like, "Oh, well, actually, now we can explore, and put that down." So it became handy immediately mm -hmm. when we needed to fly. Um, I like it. I think it's cool. I I think you can. Uh, just look at the travel board and be like, oh, okay, sure. Like, literally, we've gone from Henrik's camp to the Harkarian, Harkian forest, and that's Twice. it. Twice back and forth. Yep. And barely touched it. God, just the exploration. Every time I look at these. Because it's like, when uh, I'm always slightly a little bummed whenever it's like, it gives us a bunch of quest cards. I'm like, no, that, that's more quests that, that are available. I want to not know what these are, because I just don't want to see everything. But then I remember... Oh, wait a minute, we've uh, done two. We've completed two... Oh, I don't know how many we've actually completed. How about it's four? We have completed... 26. Six out of 200 mm -hmm. and something. Technically, one of them is just a search for a treasure, which is how we get the quest items, which I like. I think that's another sense of exploration. Like, oh, oh, that's a place we can go. Let's mm -hmm. try and get an item we need to fill a totem. The other one was the fire blast stone, was a totem, and then the rest was just stuff we got at the beginning of the game. So those treasure hunting cards, they don't actually tell you where that spot is, do they? They nope. It gives you a picture, and you have to pinpoint it. That's weird. Then how can you be sure you get the right spot? Uh, yeah, I know. I okay. was kind of thinking the same thing. Was why not just put the why not the just, map page on it? I assume, you know, if you put, I mean, like, if you just put the picture right next to the spot, you're going to be like, oh, yeah, 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 you know, those are the same. Right, it's gonna, that's the exact same picture. Spot the difference. Um, because what's great about this and the original Sleeping Gods was whenever, because the quest didn't tell us, go to page four, it doesn't have like a, you know, A3, you know, right. it didn't tell us exactly where to go, which allowed the art to speak a lot more, where it's like, it's a city to the, or a town to the east. Okay, well, I'm not seeing a town to the east. Yeah. Or, uh, hey, we know we went to a lake. It gives you a vague direction, but then the art, you can be like, oh, there's a lake to the east, so that might be where it's at. Yeah. Which is great. So that kind of is the same thing here. It allows to just be more observant. Well, yeah, but those are just very specific, and they just count on you <clears throat> getting the exact right. I'm sure that they're all different enough that it's not... No, they're all literally the same. A lot of confusion. I mean, well, I mean that, one's a, that one's a weapon. That one tells us to get us an adventure card, but these ones are just kind of like... Instead of relying on succeeding challenges and stuff and yeah. the story quest to get the quest, it's like, okay, oh, hey, we happen to be on a spot that looks like a mountain thing, so let's go there and get one of the quest items. Um, it, but in terms of flying, if you don't really like the way that they do it, they do have a variant rule for oh. quick landing. Uh, when you perform the fly action, you may drop off Claire anywhere on the open atlas, not only on the landing place. However, Claire must start on the landing place square as normal. If playing with this variant, you may perform the fly action without moving the plane to a different landing location. For example, you could move Claire to a space on the same open atlas page. In this case, the plane's distance is zero when drawing fate to check for damage, but it still costs fuel. So you could just be on the same spot and have and fly to like there. Right. And it just says, Designer's note, this variant is not as realistic, but you may want to use it if you'd like to use the plane to travel more often. It's a great way to avoid any obstacles on your destination space. Oh, that's a lot. So, if you don't want to deal with hazards or anything like that and, and not spend a bunch of your time just walking somewhere, you can just spend the fuel and pop over. Which which I was considering. I'm like, why wouldn't we just take the plane and just fly over the, the forest and land there? Well, well, have you tried landing in a forest? <laughs> that's also <laughs> true. Hence why it's not as realistic. Yeah. But if you're... Just want to be a little more bit more gamey. efficient. Yeah, more gamey. Uh, manage fuel a little bit more. And go for it. It's in the game. But then you have to keep track of where you left the plane. 
I think it says she always has to start, like, in there when you want to do that. So you, I think you still have to... I don't think there's actually, like, a plain token. I think you just... That's just kind of a way for you to pop on the spot. And then you have to walk back. Then you have to walk back and mm -hmm. do it again. I got you. Um, but that's pretty much it. That's, that's the major changes to this game. Um... What are you gonna rate it so far? It's a ten. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's ten out of ten. Yeah. What about you, bro? So far. Yeah. I'll go to five. <laughs> uh, that could go up or down. I honestly expected nothing less, though. Right. Um, from Mr. Lockett himself. But I also stayed away from every single update. I knew none of the changes. The only thing I knew was there was like camping, and I and I heard that there was more character focused stuff. I didn't know what that meant. Yeah. Um, I was like, as long as it's the as long as it's the same as the original Sleeping Gods, which it is ninety percent of yep. original Sleeping Gods. I was like, it, it'd have to be super shitty. In fact, it's an eleven because I have Foreteller now. <laughs> ah, I'm not the one reading it. Um, oh, also one thing they added that was really cool was wandering challenges. Oh, that's right. Had a little bit more like of that seventh continent thing where it's like, hey, we can each now individually do something. Majority, we walk as a party, but every now and then we can go to a location that has a specific thing where we can all do something. Yeah. That's nice. That or, or collect a bunch of different quests. Or yeah. Items yeah. yeah. It just felt a little bit more like... It's which, almost like we zoom in on what we're doing. Right. You know what I mean? Those like, those brief respites of like... Of like, like, I'm looking at a tree. Yeah. I'm and then she's there. sewing up a jacket and like yeah, other just, people are like... Yeah, I'm fighting a bear. The, those yeah. camp... Yeah, it's kind of like those... In, <laughs> I'm fighting a bear. Those... Yeah, those kind of like JRPG camp moments where you like rest and you can go around and like talk or talk mm -hmm. to all your individual party members like in Baldur's Gate or something. And it's like, oh, well, what are you doing? And oh, Lysel's just, just a creepy... Yeah, Lysel's just over there gooing. Um, but it's like, uh, it, like, it meant, like, our first wandering quest was like, she's like, oh, my jacket tore, and she's sewing it up, and then you're messing with a frog thing, and then it's like, hey, uh, Ed, what are you doing? Oh, I'm climbing the tree! <laughs> like, which I didn't do, but it's like, you, that was an option. Which, again, added more stuff to do, instead of it always being something in the quest book of reading and challenges, it's like, That's true. here's more zoomed in stuff. Yeah, yeah, I mean, 10 out of 10, really, 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 really loving it, so very excited to see how it goes from here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, is that it for everyone? I think so. Okay. For me, anyway. Cool. Brett, you got anything else? Nope. Sounds good. All right. Thank you. Well, that is our thoughts on Sleeping God's Distant Skies. Let us know what you think of the game in the comments below. Stick around for the rest of the series. Other than that, like, comment, share, and subscribe, and have a wonderful whatever time of day that's for you. Hey everyone, thank you for watching, and I really hope that you enjoyed the video. If you would like to see more of my content, go ahead and click that subscribe button and the bell to be notified whenever I upload any new content. If you feel like supporting the channel, you can go ahead and click that Patreon link to be taken to my Patreon, and any help is truly appreciated. Other than that, stick around for any, any other run-throughs or reviews or cool top tens or whatever I feel like putting on. Other than that, like, comment, share, and subscribe, and have a wonderful whatever time of day it is for you.